We'll go to the book of Malachi, the fourth chapter. The book of Malachi, the fourth chapter. And uh, while you're turning there, we want to uh, greet you this morning in the name of the Lord. We sure count it an honor and a privilege to be here with you all once again. And sure appreciate Brother Paul, Sister Rebecca, and the family and the church here uh, that stand for the message. And I, I tell you, it's, uh, the Lord has sure blessed you all here in a beautiful building, a beautiful place of worship. And I uh, just thank the Lord to uh, uh, see what he's done. I, I often remember uh, coming up this way uh, several years ago. We uh, visited here, uh, my family and I met, well, several years ago, uh, probably 10, 11, 12 years ago, and you all were still in the building, I believe maybe two buildings ago, and uh, to see what God has done here and, and blessed this church with. And I'll tell you, the reason you have what you have is to stand for this message. And I, I want to say God bless you all, and we thank you for standing for the word and for the truth. And sure want to say appreciate Brother Josiah McClurney was up yesterday for the wedding, and he uh, offered to drive us up here. And uh, as a minister and a deacon from our church there back home, so we appreciate him coming, and uh, we thank the Lord for that. And we want to look here in the book of Malachi, the fourth chapter, and uh, in, the, in the fifth verse, I know as message believers, we're all familiar with this verse, but I just want to pull something out of here. The Bible says, behold, I will send you, Elijah the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Now, I know a lot of people read Malachi 4, 5, and 6, and a lot of times the only thing they see in there is Elijah the prophet, but there's actually three different parts being fulfilled here. It says, I, which is God, will send you, which is the bride of Jesus Christ, Elijah the prophet, which we believe to be none other than, the, than, a, than a man sent from God named William Branham. But I want you to notice here, he actually says, I will send you. So it's not something you're going to find you're not going to make this man. You're not going to make this prophet. But God is going to send it. So in other words, he's going to send you a gift. Now, in the book of Ephesians, the fourth chapter, I want to look there uh, maybe just to pull a few more scriptures here. Ephesians 4 and verse number 8. Uh, this is a very familiar scripture. In Ephesians 4 and verse number 8, Paul here writing to the Ephesians says, Wherefore he saith when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Now he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. Notice here what he did. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in all love, and love may grow up into him and do all things, which is the head, even Christ. Now, I, I love verse 16, from whom the whole body fitly joined together. So this is not going to be a divided body, but it's going to be a body joined together, compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase in the body unto the edifying of itself in love. You believe the Lord this morning. We ask the Lord to add the blessing to the reading of his word as you may have your seats here for just a few moments uh, from those scriptures today. If the Lord would help me, I'd like to speak to you. And if I would title this, I want to talk to you for a few moments here on operating the gift that God sends you. Operating the gift that God sends you. And maybe uh, just to to, uh, pull, to pull a, 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 a thought out of that, maybe just speak to you on the power 
of your pull, the power of your pull, operating the gift that God sends you. I look here at the definition or the meaning of the word operate. It means of a person to control the functioning of a machine, amen, a process or a system. So actually when you're operating something, you're actually controlling it or you're, you're, you're moving it, you're pulling on it, you're causing it, amen, to move in a certain direction. Now, in, in the message glorified Jesus, the prophet of God introduces to us the term the operation of the Holy Spirit. He says, now, may those without the Holy Spirit be born again tonight with the Holy Spirit. He said, I pray, Father, that all the sick and the afflicted, every one's will be healed this night. He said, get glory out of the service, for we commit ourselves, amen, to thee for the operation of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. How many this morning could say in this service, I'm committing myself to you, Lord, amen, for the operation of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Another place he says, God in his mercy, amen, through the operation of the Holy Spirit reveals, amen, spiritual truth, the word itself. So, amen, the Holy Ghost comes down into the church. It's not the, it's not the preacher revealing the word, amen, but it's the Holy Ghost himself coming down in the church, amen, revealing the word, which is the spiritual truth. He said another place, the Holy Spirit, amen, was up on the church at Pentecost, and it came right down through that age, right on down through the age to the Lutheran and the Baptist and the Methodist on down, amen, until in this age here, it's still the same Holy Spirit. So, amen, that there are no two Holy Ghosts, right? <laughs> There's no two, uh, there's no two lords. There's no two Holy Ghost. There's no two Gospels. There's no two Bibles. Amen. There is one Lord. There is one God. There is one faith. There is one Holy Ghost. Amen. And it's the same Holy Spirit that is here in the church this morning. Amen. That was there on the day of Pentecost. He said then when people's faith gets to a place, he said then they'll get the blessings. Amen. To realize it's theirs. Amen. The same operation of the Holy Spirit will be operating in the church like it did back there. Amen. Just the same. So when you when you begin to read the Bible, you hear about women like Mary. Amen. You hear about women like Hannah in the temple. All different people in the Bible. Amen. That they heard that God could do something. They, they, they heard that God had the ability to heal or he had the ability to give child. Amen. To a barren womb. Amen. They heard about all these things. Amen. But they didn't know if he could do it for them. But then there come a time. Amen. That their faith raised to a level that they was able to claim, amen, it's not just for the preacher, amen, it's not just for the priest, but it's for me, amen, see, then the purpose in these services is not, amen, just to come together three times a week, or amen, to sing a few songs, but the purpose in these meetings, amen, is to preach the word until your faith comes to a level you realize, amen, it's not just for Brother Branham, and it's not just for Brother Paul, and it's not just for the evangelist, amen, but God has got something for me. Hey, amen. God has got a blessing for me. God amen has got a healing for me. All things are still possible. Amen to them that believe. Now amen I just want to say it like this. The prophet of God will preach a message called amen things that are to be. And in that message, he says, now think, if God in his mercy has the mother, amen, before the little baby is born. I don't know if you can give me anything on this floor, but I'd appreciate it. Amen, this little baby is born. It's craving for some vitamin, and the mother's word speaks forth. Amen, dad, I want cantaloupe or watermelon. I want something or another. Why? He'll do everything he can to get that. Amen, because he wants his child, amen, to be born as perfect as it can be. Now think about this. Amen. A mother carrying a child. Amen. That, that, that sounds good. Thank you. Amen. A mother carrying a child. Amen. Wakes up in the middle of the night and she says, Dad, I want cantaloupe or I want watermelon. Amen. Or maybe she wants a pickle or she wants a hamburger. Amen. Now here's the thing. Amen. You've got to get up and you've got to go get it. You've you got to go to the store. You've got to go to McDonald's. Amen. You've got to go somewhere and get something to satisfy. Amen. The need. You're not a creator. You can't just say watermelon be here. Amen. Cantaloupe be here. 
Amen. So you've actually got to go and find it. You've got to go get it. He said, but notice here, amen, if a natural father is like that, then how much more able her, amen, is the heavenly father, amen, for he is a creator. Amen. Then this morning, if there is a need in your life desiring something from God, we don't have to go find it. Amen. We don't have to go dig it up. Amen. We don't have to go hope the store is still open where we can buy it. Amen. But there's something in the house of God. Amen. We can speak the word. Amen. And creation power can come in the church. Amen. And the very thing you have need of, amen, can be manifested right before you. He said he is here, amen, to prepare us, amen, a body like his own glorious body if we want to live. He said then there is something in us that calls, amen, to live. And there is something in us that calls. Somebody say calls. It calls us to do right. He said, then God will call somebody on the platform or the pulpit that will preach the absolute truth. Amen. See, it shows you if you are a real child of God, then you begin to cry out. Amen. God, take it away from me. Amen. Circumcise me from this. Take these things away from me. It's needed for your heavenly home. You're going to. Amen. He's gone to prepare because you've got to be a real word bride of Christ. Now think about this. If there's something in your heart, amen, that's calling out to God, then God will call a preacher on the platform, amen, to preach the absolute truth. And when you hear that, amen, something will cry out, Lord, amen, take it away from me. Now we're living in the day and time where there's two spirits, amen, that are coming to maturity. Those two spirits actually begin in the book of Genesis. One of those spirits, Amen. Is the true spirit, and the other one is the false spirit. Now we all know there is a truth to everything, right? Amen. And there is a false. Now, now I know people say, "Well, Amen." There's a true fivefold ministry, and there is a false fivefold ministry. And if that if that's really what you want to believe, you're an American. Amen. You're entitled to believe whatever you want to. Amen. But let me just say this: the problem I have is when people begin to try to identify, Amen, what the true ministry is and what the false ministry is. Amen. But let's not take my opinion or your opinion. Let's take what a prophet said. He said, see, the word, paraphrasing, amen, identifies the characteristic of God. Amen. So the characteristic of the true fivefold ministry is what the Bible says, amen, is they preach the word. Amen. They preach the word. They're instant in season and they're out of season. They reprove, they rebuke, they exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Amen. So the true fivefold ministry, amen, and preaches the absolute truth. Now in the book of John 8 verse 30, chapter 8 verse 31, it said, then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, amen, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. See, then what is the truth? Amen. The truth is the word, right? Amen. Now the prophet of God says here, and I'm just laying the foundation. He says, now the other vision was contrary to the Bible. Amen. But my Micah was with the Bible, and God has got to keep his word. Do you get it? He said, now what happened to Ahab? He was killed that day, and the dogs licked his blood as the sun went down out of the chariot at the pool where they washed in the night. That's true. He said, for one man who took God's word, his vision lined up with God's word, and it was perfect. It was the absolute truth. He said, a vision must line up with God's word, amen, and a preacher. Amen. Must line up with God's word. No matter what we think, what we are, the conditions of the country, the crowd, whatever it is, amen, we must line up, amen, with God's word. So, amen, amen, a preacher can't be half-hearted. Amen. A preacher can't have his own ideas and his own objectives and his own agendas. Amen. A preacher has got to line up with God's word. Amen. Because he has got to bring the church in line with the same word. Now, now the prophet says it like this. He said those Pharisees believed in many things and they believed it to be the truth. He said they said we are God's children. Now watch this. And they were until. Somebody say they were until. 
They were until the word was preached. And when the word was preached and vindicated, then they become sinners, amen, for rejecting the thing that they know was right. And they witnessed that. They said, we know that our teacher come from God and no man can do the things you do, amen, without God being in you. Now think about this, amen, they were the children of God until the word was preached and the attitude they took, amen, towards the preached word which was vindicated and witnessed by God, amen, it changed them, amen, from being children into being sinners, amen, by rejecting the word preached, amen, if somebody can hear the word and can reject the word and can change the condition of their life, amen, then what can happen to somebody, amen, that hears the word but they don't reject the word, amen, they receive the word, they accept the word, they believe the word, I'll tell you what it'll do, it'll change you from depression, amen, to joy. It'll, it'll change you from sickness into health. It, it'll change you from doubt into faith. Amen. The word preached has still got the power to change the church. Now, 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 now let me just say this. Amen. God has still got preachers. Can you say amen? He's still got preachers and they're not sissified preachers. <laughs> Well, that's a quote. He said, we just asked the ministers. Now, I want you to hear this. I'm, I'm just laying a foundation if that's okay. He said, I want you to hear this. He said, is there any ministers here that's in the building tonight that believes this message I preached? He said, these creeds and man-made doctrines today is not of God, but they are of man. He said, and we really ought to go back to the Bible way. Go back to the beginning. I want some of those ministers, amen, to walk forward and stand here with me while we lay hands and and pray for these people here. He said, on these, on these people seeking for God's great blessing on their life. He said, some of you ministers, if you will, that believes this to be the vital truth. He said, don't come no other way, see. Amen. Be a man who believes it to be the absolute truth. Amen. Now, now, now that, that, is a, that is a very powerful quote to me when a prophet says, amen, be a man. And I, I looked up, what does, the, what does the definition of that phrase, be a man, mean? It means to put up with something, amen, or take responsibility for it, amen, to deal with something, amen, such as pain or mis misfortune, amen, without complaining. So, amen, God is looking for preachers, amen, who will be men with with this message. Amen. God is looking for preachers who will stand toe to toe with the devil and will declare that God's word is still supreme above everything else. Amen. He's looking for people who will take responsibility in the message a man running from the presence of the Lord. He said when you see this then in this day now when the word of God has made these promises of these things that we see happening now then we've got the responsibility amen to either face up to it or get away from it. You just can't stay neutral. You've got to do something about it. Amen. Something has got to be made a decision. You cannot come in that church door and go out the same person you came in. You're either going to leave better, amen, or worse. You're going to leave further away, amen, or closer to God. He said, and how people, amen, shirk the responsibility. Amen. Now let me just preach to you here for a second. Amen. Because I think if we really got a revelation of what a problem prophet is saying, it would change the way we act in church. Amen. It would be more than just coming and sitting on the pew and watching the preacher and saying, well, we're just here for a little intellectual gathering. Amen. I think it would put a fire, amen, in more than the pulpit. It would put a fire in the pews. You say, what are you saying? I'm saying these services are not just religious gatherings. Amen. These sermons, amen, are not just things that your pastor, amen, or these preachers have studied and put together, amen, to show you that they can build a thought. Amen. These are directions. Amen. Coming from God. Amen. To change your life. <laughs> now, now, well, you say, Brother Andrew, I, I really don't think it matters that much. I don't think it really matters how much I put in the service. I, I don't think it really matters how much I give. You know, I see the song leader up there and he says, come on and help me sing. 
But you know what? I just I just don't think it matters. Now, it may get bumpy here for a second, but that'll be okay. We'll get through it, okay? Amen. Well, I just don't think I need to clap my hands. And I just don't think I need to raise my hand. You know, I think Brother Paul needs to do all the hollering. And, and I think the song leader needs to do all the amen and all the worship. Amen. What devil have you let get on you? Amen. To convince you that this is not a house of worship. Amen. This is not a showmanship. This is not a this is not a one man show. Amen. This is a house of God. Amen. We're believing come together in the unity of the faith in the spirit of Jesus Christ amen not to lift up a man amen not to lift up an idea amen but to lift up the king of kings I tell you what amen if you demand the pulpit to put forth some effort amen don't you think it's time the pews amen put forth some effort if you demand the preacher amen to sacrifice and give and give and give amen don't you think it's time you sacrifice amen and give a little bit amen if you demand the song leader, amen, to consecrate himself and find the mind of God, amen, it's getting tight but I'll preach right through it, amen, if you demand the song leader, amen, to get consecrated and to find the mind of God for the song service, amen then why can't you turn your phone off amen, 30 minutes before service amen, and get before the Lord amen, and get consecrated yourself amen, you want to see a difference in the services, it ain't going to be a new choir song, it ain't going to be a new musician, it ain't going to be a new building. It'll be when believers, amen, can lay aside their own ideas and their own thoughts about what they think church ought to be and take what the Bible said church ought to be. And the Bible said, I would that all men would come together and would lift up holy hands and would give praises unto God. Listen, friends, amen, this is not a social hall. This is a house of God, amen, where the Spirit of God will lead a man behind the pulpit, amen, to preach the very secret of your heart. Now, now it amazes me that we, that, amen, is this okay? It, it amazes me, amen, that we've let, we've let the devil come in and totally change what the house of God is. You know, amen, some people now, if you preach on hell, they get mad. If you preach on holiness, they blow up like a bullfrog eating buckshot. Amen, if you preach on sin, amen, they get all tore up. Amen, if you preach a little message on gossip, they get all wadded up. Amen, if you preach on backbiting and bitterness, they'll get all mad at you. Amen, Brother Paul, you get close to their personal life. Amen. Well, they're going to go find another church. Amen. But let me remind you, amen, the Bible has not changed what the word says, that the house of God is still a house of correction. Well, hello, somebody. Amen. The house of God is still a house of correction. I believe in positivity. I believe in preaching faith. I believe in shouting. I believe in rejoicing. Amen. But if we ever back off, amen, of keeping the house of God, amen, clean and decent and in order, we have backed off of the commission that God gave the church, amen, preach the gospel. Amen. I'll say this. Thank God for men of God who have not shirked the responsibility. Amen. Thank God for pastors that has not shirked the responsibility. Amen. Now, amen. I'm going to preach here for a second. Amen. Because the devil wants to shut the pastors up. Amen. Because if he can shut the pastors up, amen, there'll be no voice. Amen. Crying out against sin and ungodliness and unclean living in the house of God. If he can shut the pastor up, there'll be no voice. Amen. In the watchtower. Amen. Screaming about the enemy that is coming. Amen. But I say, God, amen. Give our pastors the voices of angels. Amen. Give them the strength. Amen. Give them the courage. Amen. Give them the nerve. Amen. Give them the courage and boldness. Amen. To stand and to declare God's word. If it hurts our feelings, if it hurts our family's feelings, if it hurts our pride, how many will say, I'm not here, amen, to have my ego stroked and to be told how good I am. I am here for one purpose, and that is God, you cut away and circumcise, amen, everything from my heart heart and is unlike you until the Holy Ghost, amen, can claim my vessel. I can be more than a church member. I can be more than a pew sitter. I can be a Messiah at sir. Amen. God give us preachers. Amen. That'll preach the word. Amen. Now let me say this. God, amen, has sent us some wonderful things. Amen. I am thankful, amen, for everything God has sent us. Can I say it like this? We ought to be thankful, amen, for what God has sent, amen, what God is sending, and what God will continue to send. 
What are you saying? I'll say this. I am thankful for God. Anybody, can I get a witness here? Anybody else thankful for God? I am thankful for God. I am thankful for the message. I'm thankful for the messenger. But you know what? I am thankful, amen, for faithful preachers, amen, who are under the final messenger and they are boldly preaching the message. I'm thankful for God. I'm thankful for the messenger. I'm thankful for the message he sent us, amen. But I am thankful that God has still got a voice in the land today. Now, when you begin to realize this, you'll see, amen, that every service, amen, is a service you ought to be thankful for. Every service is another space, Amen. In time that God has allowed us to have. Now the Bible says in Revelation 2.21, I gave her space, amen, to repent of her fornication and she repented not. Now that word space there, it means time, it means season, it means a while, it means oftentimes it's either time long or short. Amen. So every service, amen, is, is another space. Amen. If there's not something right to make it right, every service is another space space, if the devil has, has brought something in your life that you know shouldn't be there, amen, it's another space to get rid of it, amen, but, amen, now this, this may be a little bit different, but I'm just preaching what the Lord put on my heart, okay, amen, it used to be, amen, when people heard the preacher preach about sin and ungodliness, if the preacher ever hit television one time, amen, it used to be people couldn't wait to get home and kick the thing out of the house, amen, but you know the devil's turned the tide, amen, you let the pastor strike something, and instead of getting mad at the devil, they get mad at the preacher. Well, hello, somebody. <laughs> Instead of getting mad at the devil, they get mad at the preacher preaching it. But you ought to be rejoicing, amen, that God give you another space, amen, to hear the truth and give you another opportunity, amen, to be released from the thing the devil's trying to hang over your head. Now, the prophet of God said, do you know that this church, speaking of, of this church, was more wicked than Ahab? Do you know that, she, that he repented for a while and he walked softly before God? He said, you cannot say that about this Catholic church. Church. She never repented, but she has stubbornly destroyed any and all who tried to help her repent. That is history. Now, God kept raising up not only messengers to each age, but he raised up some wonderful helps. Amen. Of those messengers, he gave every age some wonderful men of God, and they did everything they could. Amen. To bring the church back to God. Amen. God certainly gave her opportunity, and he gave her help to repent. Amen. Do you realize that the pastor, amen, is not just here for a job? Amen. He's not just here, amen, to visit you in the hospital, amen, and to see you the, as you walk across the graduation stage, amen, but he is here. And let me just take some liberty and say a pastor's word, amen, should not be subject to a psychologist's word. A pastor's word for your family, amen, should not be subject to what some doctor thinks. Amen. If God give you a Holy Ghost filled pastor, and I believe he did, you ought to raise his word above the words of a school teacher, above the words of a psychologist, amen, because his words are not coming from a school, amen, his words is coming from the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Amen. He give another space. Amen. Another opportunity to repent. Now watch this. Amen. But did she repent by her fruits? No, sir. She never has. She never will. She has lost her senses in spiritual things. Do you realize every time that you turn down another space to repent is another desensitizing, amen, to the spiritual side of your life. Remember the problem of God talked about the young girl and he said, young girl, tonight's your night. Amen. To give your heart to the Lord. He said she laughed and she walked out. He said two years from then I saw her and she had a she had a, a look on her face. He said and I asked her don't I know you and she said why well, yeah preach you do. She said won't you come up to my room and let me give you a drink and, and let me give you some uh, uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me entertain you. He said how dare you amen offer a man of God such as that. She said do you remember that meeting that night? He said yes sir yes ma'am I do. She said do you remember when you called me out? He said, how can I forget? She said, if you ever made it right, you made it right that night. She said, and ever since that time, amen, I laughed and walked away and I could see my mother's soul, amen, fry in hell like a pancake and I would laugh at it. 
What did he say? He said she crossed the line, amen, between repentance, amen, and the judgment of God. She crossed the line between the mercy of God and the judgment of God, amen. She sinned her day away to repent. Oh, church, amen, I don't know what I'm bouncing against right now, but it's a spirit, amen. I'm going to bounce against it, amen. How much longer are you going to carry, amen, that unforgiveness in your heart? How much longer are you going to carry that bitterness, amen? Well, somebody hurt me and somebody... Amen. This is the season. Amen. This is the time. Amen. This is the hour. Amen. To get rid of everything in our lives that is unlike God and let the Holy Ghost fall through us. Amen, this is the time to repent. Now, 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 I know people don't like repenting services anymore. Amen, but they're still in the Bible. <laughs> amen, amen, a prophet of God said the zeal of this age is to cry what? I am wrong. Amen, that's a hard thing to say in a world that says everybody's right. Amen, but it's still in the message. Amen, somebody's wrong and somebody's right. And can I say what I believe? I believe everything is wrong and the message is right. Amen, I believe every preacher, amen, every, every psychologist, every, every theologian, every every seminary professor, every one of them is wrong and William Branham's message is right because it's not coming from the devil, it's coming from God. Now when you begin to realize amen that this is more than a service this is more than a few songs this is more than putting some money in the offering plate, amen this is more than just hearing a sermon but this is a place where lives can be changed amen where souls, amen can be free from the bondages of sin that it'll change your attitude towards the way you come to church hello can I tell you what the Bible says amen the Bible says the voice of joy and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride and the voice of them shall say praise the Lord of hosts amen for the Lord is good for his mercy endureth forever and of them that shall bring amen the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord Amen. So when you come in the house of God, you should not bring the sacrifice, amen, of unbelief and the sacrifice of negativity. But you should bring the sacrifice of praise into the house. Now, now, I think it's amazing how that in the Bible you'll see there were three magis. And the Bible says when they come to the Lord, amen, they brought gifts. And the prophet comes along and he says, what gifts do they bring? He said they brought gold, they brought frankincense, and they brought myrrh. He said, see, what they did was they brought to him what they thought of him. He said what it was was gold was deity, amen, frankincense, amen, was service, and myrrh was death. He said so they come to him realizing he was deity in service to die. Amen. Now watch this. Amen. And I say today, the things we bring to him identifies our thoughts is about him. You understand? If you believe it with all of your heart, every word of God, you'll identify it, amen, by giving all that you have to it. But if you don't believe it, if you believe it's just a good place to associate with better people around church and things like that, that's just about what you'll give. He said just a few social hours with some of the congregation. But if you really believe it with all of of your heart, then you give everything that's in you, amen, to it, see, and it identifies that you truly believe the message, you believe it to be the truth. If you really believe, amen, that this message is the truth, if you really believe that the Holy Ghost, amen, is still in the church, if you really believe in signs and wonders and mighty manifestation, amen, do you realize if an unbeliever come in here, if you really believed it, they wouldn't even have to ask you Gideon what you believe amen by your action in the house of God it will testify what you really believe amen if brother Paul's up here preaching his heart out and you're sleeping it shows amen you've not given your all to this service amen if brother Paul is laboring in the word and you got a frown on your face and you're mad amen it shows that you're not identifying yourself amen with the word that's being preached amen but you're looking at one preacher right here that still believes amen I want the world to know I want hell to know. I want the angels to know. I want the demons to know. I want everybody around me to know. When I hear the word, I identify myself with the word I am hearing. Hey, you know what the Bible said in Nehemiah? The Bible says when Ezra stood up and read the scroll, amen, the whole congregation said, 
Well, we forgot that word. Amen. Hey, amen. Think about that. Ezra read the word and the whole church said amen. You know why? Because they wanted every onlooker to see I identify with what's being said. I believe what's being said. Amen. And I'll say this. Amen. We need to get our amen back in the house of God. Amen. We need to get the ability. Amen. To back the word back in the house of God. Hey. Hey. Can I preach to you for a second? Amen. If the preacher says amen this message is right. Every believer that believes it ought to put a wholehearted amen behind it. If the preacher says amen that ungodliness is still wrong, every Holy Ghost clean living individual in the church ought to put their whole heart behind it because God has sent a gift to you, amen, to manifest his life in you and to bring you to a place of edification and perfection. Amen. See, Satan does not want this message preached. He hates this message being preached. And there is a reason why he does not want this message preached. There is a reason why he don't want you to hear it. Or there's another reason he don't want you to pull on the gift that's preaching it. Amen. Now let me just let you know a little secret. You're operating this service this morning. You, you, you may not even realize that, but you're operating this service this morning. Do you realize, amen, there's a sound booth back there? That soundboard is not operating itself. There is an operator to the sound booth. There's a camera back there in the corner. That camera's not moving itself. Amen, there's an operator. Amen, that's, that, that's controlling. Amen, the function of it. Amen, these, these instruments. Amen, they're, they're instruments. Amen, but there's a musician, which is an operator. Amen, that begins to strike a key and he begins to bring life. He begins to bring music. Are you hearing me? Amen. Then that's the same way it is in the house of God. Amen. There is a gift in the life of the man of God behind the pulpit, but that gift is not there for him. It's not there to be a career. It's not there to be notified as some important man. That gift was placed there by the almighty God. Amen. For his word born bride upon the earth. Amen. To come to a place. Amen. Of manifestation to a place of perfection, amen, by pulling or by operating that gift. Amen, you realize why the devil don't want you to pull? Amen, because your faith, amen, will pull this service into another level. Amen, he don't want you to pull. Amen, because your faith, amen, will pull the word, amen, right out of the preacher. Your faith, amen, will draw out the supernatural. The prophet said, Thou, O God, has come in the midst of the people, and their faith has pulled out supernatural words. Amen. Their faith has pulled out supernatural words, explaining to them, amen, their life or what they have done, what they must do, and what will be. Amen. One gift, amen, with a, with a prophetic gift. Amen. The prophet said, The faith of the people, amen, is pulling out of me supernatural natural words. Amen. Think about this. Amen. Think about one woman who stood before the prophet. Amen. And what did she say? Amen. She said this. She was carrying a complex. She was carrying a scar. And the prophet stood there and he said, I see you as a child. You was bit by a dog. So he goes back to her past, right? He goes back to her past and he finds out what has been. He comes to her present and says, you're carrying a nervousness. So he's come to what has been, what, what is. And he says, but here I see you, amen, and you're happy and you're well and you're free. Amen. What just happened, Brother Gideon? He just went to the past and brought the past to the present. And he went to the future and brought the future to the present. He just manifested, amen, three different aspects of one in individual's life, amen, and the devil will do everything he can, amen, to hinder the service because he don't want you to hear the word that will set you free. It's not the preacher that'll set you free. It's not the singer that'll set you free. It's the word. It's the anointing. It's the spirit of God. It's the power of God in the church that will set you free. Listen, I have been in meetings and I have seen services so tight, amen, that you couldn't pick a banjo string in there, but let somebody begin to pull. Let somebody begin to say amen. Let somebody stand up and say, that ain't nothing but the truth preacher. And I've seen the power of God, amen, dropping meetings until cold atmospheres, amen, melt away in the fire of God. Oh, church, I'm telling you what, you've got the ability this morning, amen, to take these services from just being Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings, amen, to being Holy Ghost outpourings, upper room experience. 
are you hearing me? Amen. Can we just try it for a minute? Amen. <laughs> Hey, hey, amen. Hey, amen. You don't have to start real loud. Just start somewhere. Amen. That's the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, amen. Hey, do you feel better now? You know what you're doing? You're bumping against devils. Them devils right now, they're bumping against you. They're bumping against you with sleepiness. They're bumping against you with ideas and condemnation and guilt and all kinds of things. Hey, amen. They're bumping against you, brother. They're telling you this service ain't for you. Brother Paul, them demons bump against you all week long and say you ain't got nothing to say. They bump against you and they bump against you. Amen. But this is our time to bump back. Come on church. This is our time to push back. This service this morning is your opportunity young man. Amen. To push against every devil every spirit, every lie that's been pushing against you all week. This here is your space. It is your opportunity. It is your time to say devil you've pushed and you've pushed and you've encroached and you've encroached but today there is a fire in the house of God and I'm not settling. Amen. For just another service. I'm not settling. Amen for just another song. I'm not settling. Amen for just another meeting. I want to break out of this cold realm. I want to break out of this formalism. I want to break into the place where Hattie Wright stood. I want to break into the place where a prophet stood. And he said, George, raise up off of that bed. You say, Brother Andrew, we're not prophets and we can't do it. You're exactly right. But we are God's. We are manifested sons and daughters of God with a right. Are y'all hearing me? I'm preaching to you with a right to break out into a realm where all things are possible. The devil don't want you to hear this message. He don't want you to pull. Because you know what? You can have a question on your heart all week long. I'm going to make it real simple, okay? You can have a question on your, on your heart all week long. Is this message for me? And the preacher can get behind the pulpit and he can begin to preach on the seventh seal. Or preach on Daniel 70 weeks or, or something. And you've been carrying this question all week long. Right. Now you know what you can do? You can hear his text and say, well, this service ain't for me. I don't need nothing out of the seventh seal. I don't need nothing out of Daniel 70 weeks. I don't. Or you can say, God, you know what you're up to. And you know what you can do? That preacher can be a thousand miles on the other side of every fault you're having. But if you begin to pull on God and you begin to say, Lord, I need an answer. Amen, Lord, I need a word. Amen, Lord, I need a breakthrough. Amen, Lord, I need to hear an answer to this question. Is this message for me? Amen, I've been fellowshipping with you all week long, Lord. I haven't talked to Brother Paul. I haven't talked to the preacher. They don't know the questions and the thoughts that's up on my heart, but you do, Lord. And I need to hear something from you. And you know what? You begin to pull on God. You begin to pull on God. You know what you can do? You can get a hold of the man that's putting the words in the preacher's mouth. You can get a hold of the man that is putting the words in the preacher's mouth. And I have seen God, amen, change the direction of an entire service, amen, to answer one question. Now let me just say this. If the devil can put you to sleep, you'll never get your answer. If he can put your mind somewhere else, you'll never get your answer. But if you'll begin to push through, if you'll begin to break through, if you'll begin to say, God, I'm not backing up, I'm not giving in, I'm not quitting, I'm not turning around, I come here for a conference with you and you're still God. Amen. You can still put the answer to my question in the mouth of your servant. Well, oh Brother Andrew, we really don't have much power. Let me say this. There is a hidden power in this message. The prophet said, amen, there's no power in steeples, there's no power in pretty pews, and there's no power in best dressed crowds. He said, but it takes a hidden power of the Spirit of God, amen, to break the toehold, amen, that word in there to break the hold. So it's not the personality of the preacher that'll break the toehold. It's, it's not the fanciness of how he says his words that'll break the toehold. It's the word 
Glory. It's the word being preached that will break the stronghold. Brother Bram told the story about the lawyer that time who went in the courtroom and he stood there and he cried and he, he boo-hooed and he hollered. And the promise said when he got done, he said the judge looked at him and said, is that all you got? He said, well, I did what I did what somebody else did. He said, sir, it takes more than just all the emotions, amen, to, to win the case. He said, there's got to be some law in there. Now, now, I know people love to take that quote and say, well, away with emotions. And I say, away with that nonsense, too. What do you say? Away with the nonsense of saying we don't need emotion in the house of God. Anything without emotion is dead. Come on, church. Anything without emotion is dead. Amen. Brother Paul, they want they, they want dead song services. They, they want dead musicians. Amen. But you know what? I don't like going to a church service. Amen. And singing songs that makes me think I'm in a funeral home. Amen. I like some music that's got some beat to it. I like some music that's got some feeling in it. Come on, church. Amen. Let me just let you in a little secret. If you don't enjoy what you're doing, don't worry. You won't be doing it long. If you don't enjoy serving God, don't worry because nobody will continue doing something that they don't enjoy doing. But if you enjoy it, something has gripped you. You know what, Brother Paul, can I put my, my voice on record with your voice? I enjoy Holy Ghost singing. I enjoy music that's got some feeling in it. Amen. This is not a house of mourning. This is a house of worship. This is a place where there ought to be a free spirit, where there ought to be a free yield to let the Spirit of God, amen, to move and the freedom and the authority of the Holy Ghost. I believe in emotion, but there's got to be some word in there. And the prophet said, see, it takes the word to break the stronghold of the devil. Amen. Do you realize what Pentecost did? Amen. Pentecost, amen, give 120 cowards the boldness to stand up. Hey. Well, can I just tell you what the prophet said? He said, they went up there a bunch of cowards. He said, but brother, after he went up to Pentecost, speaking of Peter, he had a courage to put on the whole armor of God. <laughs> he said, now watch, what is it? The word that he had walked with was in him, burning him up with fire in his flesh and soul. He had the whole armor of God on. What is it? God makes himself ever present in his own army. He is with us. He is in us. That's the armor. He is the word. He is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is in us, which is the word making the promise manifest. For the spirit quickens the word. He said, what happened? He said, David met Goliath and he picked up five stones and a slingshot. And here he comes because something is fixing to happen. Because there's the word. Let's say this together the word the promise and the power <laughs> David had the word the promise and the power and notice this to sling it that's what we need today is a man that will take God's word with the power of the Holy Ghost behind him amen to press it out there and to watch it come to pass are you hearing me? God is looking for some men today that's got the courage, amen, to sling the word out there and to press and to press and to press until it comes to pass. Now, Brother Paul, any of you preachers here know that sometimes you preach and it feels like you're preaching against a wall. <laughs> Ever been there? It feels like you're literally amen, pushing against a wall. It feels like you're the only one that's doing anything to push. But you know what you don't do? You don't close your Bible and say, well, we'll try again Sunday or we'll try again next week. You stand there and you keep on pushing and you keep on pushing. And Brother Boaz, you keep on pressing and you keep on pressing because you know if I just keep pressing before long, that wall will come down. <laughs> amen, you know how you can stand there and say that? Because I've seen it happen before. Well, is it the truth? The word will still defeat the devil anywhere, anytime, under any condition. He said, see, just throw it out there and keep on pressing and it'll come to pass. His word of fire, his army dressed with the ever present of himself. Amen. So God has got preachers that are preaching the word, the promise, and the power. Amen. They're preaching the word, they're preaching the promise, and they're preaching the power. And those three together is causing devils to fall. 
causing the walls to come down. Are you hearing me? Are, are you with me this morning? See, you've got to you've, you've keep on pressing because the word will still bring the enemy down. That's why the devil don't want the word preached. Can I give you a testimony? The devil don't want the word preached because it's through the preaching of the word that demons are cast out. I was preaching in a meeting not long ago and while I was preaching, amen, the Holy Ghost just come to my heart so strong and said, deal with the spirit. And I began to deal with the spirit of lust and a spirit of pornography. How it will come in a home. How it will destroy a marriage. How it will destroy a teenager. How it will how it'll, how it'll put, put your mind in prison. Amen, brother. I didn't know why I was going that way. Amen, but about that time there was a brother in the back. He jumped up and he threw his arm out like that. And he said, I'm free. Oh, God. Are you awake this morning? That might have not meant to nobody else around him, but that was an answer. You know what he did? He called me. He said, Brother Andrew, I've been battling those two spirits, amen, for months, and the devil never said I would get free. And he said, so I had accepted just to live with it and try to control it. He said, but when the Holy Ghost spoke out of you and said, you don't have to live with that devil when you was called to defeat it, he said, that was my answer. He said, I got my breakthrough. Oh, church, he's still God this morning morning. His word is still true this morning. He is still El Shaddai. If you need an answer, amen, push through. Come on, woman, with the issue of blood. They don't want you to get to Jesus, but you know I've got to get to Jesus. If I don't get to Jesus, I'm going to die. Oh, church of the living God, when you get desperate enough to get to Jesus, you'll shake off formalism. You'll shake off ideas. You'll forget your prestige. You'll forget your pride because you know if I don't get to Jesus, Amen, I'm going to be bound the rest of my life. But if I ever get in his presence. Come on, church. Amen, if I ever get in his presence. You know what sometimes you got to do? you got to press through. But when you get there, that's all that matters. Sometimes you got to press through to leave that song service because there's people in there that need a victory. There's people in there that need a lifting in their spirit and the devil don't want it to get it. So you know what he'll do? He'll put bars and bars and bars and bars. Amen, but Gideon, I'll tell you this, keep on singing because before long, the witness of heaven will open up. Brother Paul, there'll be times it look like nothing's happening, but can I give you something this morning? Keep on preaching. Amen, because before long, the witness Windows of heaven will open. Oh, come on, church. There'll be services you don't feel like saying amen, but keep on saying it. Amen. Keep on pulling. Keep on pulling. Keep on pressing. Keep on pushing. Keep on believing. Keep on worshiping. Keep on praising. And before long, you'll step out of that realm into an untapped resource where all things are possible. There's unlimited revival. Oh, somebody give him some praise. Somebody give him some worship. I'm talking about a church that believes God is still God and his word is still true and his power is still here and his spirit is still manifesting itself. Amen. God is still sending preachers and services to give the people another space. Now, now, now when you realize this, sometimes it's not going to be easy to get there. Sometimes you're going to have to draw your sword and stand toe to toe with the devil and say, I'm not leaving here until I get a blessing. I'm preaching to you this morning. Fifty, sixty years since the prophet's been off the scene. The, the message is around the world. And it's harder to get to church now than it's ever been before. Isn't that a coincidence? Well, we're here, we might as well preach. Harder now to get in the service than it ever was before. Well, Brother Andrew, I'd raise my hands and I, I'd shout amen, but I might spread COVID. Oh, Brother Andrew, I'll tell you what, I'd sing a special, but the person sung before me had the microphone. They might have COVID. Right. Well, I'm cutting now, ain't I? Yeah. 
Well, brother, and I tell you what, hey, amen. I'd come to church, but but you know what? I I, I I just I I just I just I just need to stay home. Amen. It's the devil doing that. It's a spirit of fear to bind the church. Now here's my question: How long are you going to lay down to it? How many more services are you going to let the devil rob you of getting a blessing because of the fear? Well, brother, that, and I tell you what, I, I, I'd go shake the preacher's hand and, and I, I'd go fellowship with my brothers and sisters, but I'm afraid it's the devil trying to bind you, amen, from enjoying what God has sent you. Now, let me just say this. Amen. A, a father leaves his son an inheritance, right? Do you realize no other father has a right to tell that child what to do with his inheritance? If Brother Paul, amen, leaves Gideon an inheritance, amen, Brother Ken, you don't have a right to come tell Gideon what he can do with his inheritance. Are, are you following me? Because it's not his position to say, you can't do this and you can't do that. His father left him the inheritance. If Brother Paul left Gideon the Corvette and said, you can go the speedway and drive at 80 miles an hour, amen, Brother Ken, he's got no right to say, Gideon, you can't drive at 80 miles an hour, amen, because the father left it in the inheritance. He left it in the wheel and he sent the inheritance to the son. Amen. And what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying the devil has no right, amen, to tell the church of the living God what we can do with the inheritance that our father died for us to have. Do you realize our father died that we could preach the gospel? Our father died that we could lay hands on the sick and they could recover? Our father died that we could speak in tongues, we could see visions, we could prophesy, we could sing songs, we could have the joy and the gladness in the church. Our father died and he put it in the will and he sent a gift to interpret the will to us and the devil has no business telling the church what they can do with the inheritance God left her. Now, now, let me just say this. Even Christ has left the church some wonderful gifts. But you realize the greatest gift he gave was himself. Can I have a few more minutes? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave. Somebody say he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The promise said Jesus was the greatest gift God ever gave the earth, the world. Amen. Now people had faith in it. See, there's the key. The people had faith in it because God's gifts are always looked down by the modern religious world. Amen. You can have all the gifts of the world. You can have all the gifts of the word, but unless you have faith in that gift, it'll never operate. Now, let me just go through the scriptures here. And can I, are you awake? Can, can, I, can I read you some things that your father sent you? Can, can I read you some gifts? He sent you this. He said, I will give you rest in Matthew 11. In Matthew 16, he said, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. In Luke 10, he said, I give unto you power. Amen. To tread upon serpents and scorpions. In John 14, he said, the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well springing up into everlasting life. In John 6, 51, he said, the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. In John 10, 28, he said, I give unto them eternal life. In John 14, 27, he said, my peace I give unto you. In Revelation 2, 22, to him will I give power over the nations. Amen. In Revelation 2, 28, and I will give him the morning star. These gifts are to be manifested. These gifts are to be manifested in a people. Listen, church, we do not have to take a substitute when the word is full of the original promises. Amen, Brother Andrew, I need some peace, so I'm having to take a nerve pill. Let me tell you what your father gave you. Your father said, I'll give you my own peace. <sighs> Brother Andrew, I need some rest, so I'm having to take a sleeping pill. Can I tell you what your father said? I will give you rest. Brother Andrew the devil 
is walking through my home and destroying my children and destroying the teenagers. Can I tell you what I need to do? I need to go get a 10-step program and get control of my home. No, what you need to do is you need to exercise. Amen. The authority of what your father give you. He said, I will give you power. Brother Paul, if he'll give us power, amen, to walk on scorpions and to tread on serpents, then I think he can give us power, amen, to go in our homes and say, devil, you got to find another place to live. Amen, you ain't living here. You ain't living in this house. Oh, is there any faith, amen, building in the house of God this morning? Is there anybody wanting to say, devil, you've been walking on me long enough. You've been pressing me down long enough, but my father died that I could have liberty. He died that I could have joy. Are y'all hearing me this morning? He give you these things. You didn't earn them. He give them to you. Why not use them? Why not operate them? Why sit in the house of God sad when he said, I will give you joy? Well, Brother Paul, I want the Holy Ghost. I want the Holy Ghost. I was at the prayer line the other day down in Louisiana, Brother Joe Adams. We was there, and this young man come up for prayer. And he said, Brother, he said, Brothers, I want the Holy Ghost. If anybody up here knows Joe Adams, that's a bulldog faith right there. Joe said, brother, how long are you going to keep, keep coming up here wanting it? He said, well, I want it, brother Joe. I want it. Brother Joe said, okay, if I told you, I'd give you my cell phone. He said, what are you going to do? He said, I would take it. So brother Joe reached in his pocket, and he got out his cell phone. Brother Gideon, he held it before him. He said, here it is, take it. And the boy just kind of stood there, you know. He said, that's right, brother Joe. He said, take it. He said, yes, sir, that's right. He said, take it. He said, that's good, Brother Joe. He said, I give you this cell phone. Amen, what are you going to do? Take it. He said, nah, kind of nodded, Joe. He said, nah, that's good. Brother Joe said, take it. And about that time, he finally called it. And he reached up and he took the cell phone out of Joe's hand. And Brother Joe said, that's as easy as it is to get the Holy Ghost. <laughs> oh, come on, church. He said, he said, I give it to you. You know what you've been doing? You've been praying for it. You've been begging for it. You've been trying to work it up and work it down. But his word said, amen, I give it to you. Hey, church, is there anybody this morning that says, Father, I hear what you said. You said you would give me water. You said you would give me bread. You said you would give me peace. You said you would give me rest. You said you would give me power. You said you would give me the morning star. I didn't come this morning, God, to ask are you going to give it to me? I come this morning to take it. Is there anybody here want to stand up and say, I take it? Amen. I take my peace. I take my joy. I take my victory. I take my liberty. I take my family. I take my rest. The word is here this morning. The power is in the church this morning. You just got to take it. You've got to operate it. You've got to pull on it. Hey Amen. Can I, can I take a few more minutes here with you? How many wants to take it this morning? Take it. Some of y'all didn't know you was going to help me preach, did you? Look at your neighbor and say, take it. Some of y'all still looking at me. Take it. You want it? Just take it. What have I got to do? Take it. How am I going to get it? Just take it. Brother Andrew, when's it going to come? It's already here. You've just got to take it. Brother, it's got your name on it. Philip, it's got your name on it this morning. If you want it, just go get it. Brother Paul, you ever go to a restaurant? I love going. And you got something left over? Hey, man, now. I like Japanese food. It's good. And you can tell by looking at me that I like it. So when I have some leftovers in a box, I want everybody in the house to know it's mine. When you go to the refrigerator and open the refrigerator, there's going to be no need for discernment. Can I have it or can I not? Who's 
is this. I'm going to put my name on it. I'm going to put my middle name on it. I'm going to put my last name on it. I'm going to put my initials on it. I'm going to put my signature on it. I'm going to put my birth date on it. And if I got to, I'll put my own social security number on it. You know why? Because ain't nobody going to have to wonder whose it is and if they can have it or not. You know why? Because my name is on it. Oh, church of the living God, can I tell you what a prophet said? He said this, your seat is at the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's already there. It's your name. Your name is on the Lamb's book of life. It was put there from before the foundation of the world. You know what that tells me, Sister Loretta? Amen. Can't nobody take it. Can't nobody take it. Are y'all hearing me? Can't nobody take your spot. Gideon, can't nobody fill your seat. And if God's got a blessing for you, he wants you to be so sure you get it. He puts your name on it and says, can't nobody take your blessing because it's got your name on it. If somebody wants to fill your seat on the airplane, you know what they got to do? Show some identification. And if the identification card doesn't match the name on the roster, you're not taking the seat. And the devil is trying to put kiss. He's trying to give a fake ID and take your family. He's given a fake ID and tried to take your nerves and take your joy. But can I tell you this morning, the Holy Ghost exposed him. Said he's a fraud. Now, Brother Ben said, when I become a Christian, I want to see what I'm heir to. Find a whole storehouse full of promises. I'm taking my time here because I want this to go home. It ain't just go put your name on the church book and do the best you can. You are an heir. Let's say that together. I am an heir. As Brother Ron says, let's say it with some attitude. I am an heir. Oh, Brother Andrew, I'm an heir. It ain't nothing to be ashamed of. If somebody told me I owned everything, now come on, sisters. If somebody told you you owned everything in the mall down here, all you had to do was go get it. You was heir to it. You wouldn't walk in there all sad and humble. You'd go in there with your chest stuck out, your shoulders squared back, and your head, and you'd, you'd even call your friends. Come on, guys. Somebody call you and tell you everything is yours at Bass Pro. You ain't gonna go in there all stooped shoulder and well let me see what I can what I can try to sneak out of here. Let me see if I can get something. You'd square your shoulders back and st stick your chest out. You'd walk in there and say, I'm taking that fishing pole and I'm taking that gun and I'm taking are y'all hearing me? I'm taking that boat. I'm taking that four-wheeler. I'll even take the dust on it because it's all mine. I'm an, amen, an heir is not ashamed of what they're heir to. And you are not heir to complexes. You are not heir, amen, to depression. You are not heir, amen, to generational curses. You are not heir, amen, the spirit of division and the spirit of nervousness and the spirit of heaviness. You are not heir to those things. And if you're carrying them, it's cause the devil put it on you. But can I tell you what you are heir to? You are heir to a two-edged sword that'll cut that devil's head coming and a go. Is there anybody this morning that'll say, Father, open up my eyes and let me see what I'm heir to. Look through the storehouse. When's the last time you walked through this message and seen what all was yours? When you get to feeling nervous and get to feeling sad because you ain't got a 401k, amen, busting in the bank, and you ain't got a big retirement home on the, on the lake, and you ain't got a nice future, amen, go listen to Future Home. 
Sister Sherry, go listen to Future Home, and you'll find out you're heir to the tree of life. You are heir, amen, to city that is paved with streets of gold. You are heir to the walls of Jasper. You are heir, amen, to the to the river of life. Come on, church. It's in the storehouse. Anybody want to go get it? You was baptized into it. It's yours. You're heired it. I'd go around. I'd look at this counter and see what I got here and go over here and see what I got here. Anything that looks a little too high. And out of my reach. Like divine healing or something. I'll just fold my arms on Wednesday night and Sunday morning. And I'll just sit there and look at it. Wow. I love that. But it's just too high. And there's no way I can get it. If God made you heir to it, and it's a little too high, brother, if he was big enough to make you heir to it, he's big enough to give you something to go get it. And the prophet said, I will get on Jacob's ladder. Are y'all hearing me? And I'll just climb till I get up where it's at. Oh, brother. Y'all ever been at y'all ever been in a department store? And you know how they put them suits up on the top? Amen, Sister Becky. You remember when I was little, I love suits. Y'all, y'all probably been that. Amen. As a little boy, I love suits. I wore them to school if I could, wore them to church every serve. I love suits. So one day my grandmother took me down to JC Penny and she was looking around in the kids section for suits. Well, you know what? I wanted this one certain suit. Now, I'm bringing this to a close. I wanted this one certain suit. So you know what I did? I said, Grandmommy, let's get it. She said, Well, let's go get it. Well, they didn't have my size. But there was about four more racks of suits hanging up above them. And you know what she said? Well, we'll go get a we'll go get a, a, a clerk and they'll come over here and we'll see if your size is up there. But the problem with that was, Sister Rebecca, amen, there was a ladder right there. <laughs> Confession's good for the soul. There was a ladder right there. And you know what? She went to find the clerk and I had a ladder. <laughs> You know what was on that ladder was a little rope. It said, do not climb. But you know what? That didn't stop me. You know why? Because I wanted that suit. So you know what I did? I just climbed over their suggestion, and I kept on climbing. You know what? It was a suggestion. It said this. You shouldn't climb this ladder. It was a suggestion. You know what? I didn't need their suggestion. I knew what I wanted. It was up there, and I was going to leave with it. And you know what? That's the same attitude you ought to bring to every service. Devil, you can hang your warning signs all you want to, but I know what's in this message. Amen. I know what's in this Holy Ghost. I know what's in this service. I know what's in this church. I'm not going to sit here and look at it and wish I could have it. I'm going to put my climbing shoes on. I'm going to climb. Amen. I may have to go up one and I may have to go up two and I may have to go up three, but I'll reach up there and get it. And when I get it, I'm not going to ask you, can I have it? I'm going to get it and I'm going to walk out with it. Is there anybody this morning says I got my joy and I'm walking out with it. I'm getting my peace and I'm walking out with it. I'm getting my sanity back and I'm walking out with it's mine I'll pull it down it's mine Hallelujah. it's all mine one step two step two steps closer three steps three steps closer four steps four steps closer Get closer to it. Can I let you know a little secret? When I started climbing that ladder, I was a little scared. Confession's good for the soul, right? I was a little scared. I thought, what if somebody comes over here and sees me? What, what, what if somebody comes over and asks me? I was a little nervous. But the closer I got to it, 
the further the fears went. Are y'all hearing me? You've been scared so long to reach out and get it. But the closer you get to it and can put your hands on it, the fear starts backing up. I close with this. Church, literal life, church is not a poverty stricken church. This pulpit is not a poverty stricken pulpit. I'm just talking to you now. These Sunday school rooms, these Sunday school classes, your kids aren't sitting in poverty stricken Sunday schools. I want this to go on. This is a rich church. Brother Andrew, where's the finance report? I didn't say anything about finances. This is a rich pulpit. The atmosphere of this worship, it's a rich atmosphere. The songs you're hearing sung, Brother Paul, the songs you sang, <laughs> Babylon and all them songs didn't come from a poverty-stricken songwriter. He found out what he was heir to. Went to the storehouse. Where's well, the songs you wrote? They come from a poverty stricken young man. Been in the storehouse. Found out what God left you. Some gifts. And you begin to operate them. You begin to feed them. You know what? Maybe you didn't even see the gift that was in your life. Maybe you come to this church and you didn't see nothing in you. But you sit here for about five or six years and through a gift of a pastor. He began to push back complexes, push back fears, push back timid and shyness, make you to unveil. There's something laying there. This, this family's not destroyed. But you know how you know that? Because God sent a gift. Remember the woman down there in Kentucky? She was sitting at home. And they come by and did a welfare check on her. Remember that? Yeah. Probably God said they come in. She had no food. Hardly had any heat. Was in a terrible poverty stricken condition. She, she was less than poverty. And they asked her. They said, ma'am. Well, the welfare man said, ma'am, do you not have any children? She said, yeah, I've got a son. Said he's over in India. Said, does he not care about you? Does he not check on you? Does he not, does he not see about you? She said, oh, yeah, he's busy. But said what he does is every now and again he'll send me these, these beautiful pictures. She said, I'll go over here and stack them up. And said, let me show them to you. He said, come on, let's go. Went over and pulled them off, Brother Paul. And she said, look at this one. Her smile got bigger and his eyes got bigger. She showed him all those pictures. He said, ma'am, what do you think those are? She said, well, they're just Wednesday night services. They're just, they're just, they're just youth meetings. They're just, they're just Sunday night services, Sunday morning services. He said, ma'am, them, 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 are, them are telegrams he sent to you with moneygrams, with money in them. They're moneygrams. She said, what? He said, there's money in these. She said, how much? The rem said, time he got done counting, she was the richest woman in the county. But she didn't know it until God sent a gift to take the, to take the pictures and open them. It's more than a picture of the Taj Mahal. That's $50,000. It's more than a picture of some mountain in India. It's $25,000. Right. Are you hearing me this morning? Right. How, how many days had she sat there thinking nobody cared about her? 
How many days, Brother Philip, did she want to go get something to eat? But she, she thought she didn't have the money. And there it was in her house. I know this is simple as simple can be, but I pray it's ringing truth to somebody. There it was in her house. And she didn't even know it. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, do you realize what's in this house? Hallelujah. Healing. Yes. Restoration. Yes. Renewal. Yes. Refreshment. Amen. How many can say, God, help me to operate the gift? Amen. Here she was wanting it. And she already Here you are this morning wanting something from God. And he sent a foolish, crazy, hollering, spitting, stomping, sweating preacher to tell you, take it. You want it? Just take it. You want it? You want this? Just take it. For the Andrew, I'm not good enough. You want it? Just take it. I didn't come to get your excuses. You want it? Just take it. Y'all want it? Or won't you just take it? What about this family here? Y'all want it? Won't you just take it? It's got your name on it, brother. I can't take it for you. Only those whose name is on it can claim it as musicians are coming this morning. The pull of your faith. Can I tell you the pull of, can I tell you what, what pulling on God will do? I'm running out of time. I'm sorry. But there was a woman in Memphis one day who was an insignificant Brother Bram said, a little insignificant colored lady down in, the, in a neighborhood in Memphis. He said, her boy was laying in there dying. And she said, God, in the Bible, you sent that shoot him out woman, Elijah. And I'm that shoot him out woman. And this is my son. But God, where is your Elijah? And here was Elijah flying. Can, can, can I just break it down how powerful you are? Can, can I tell you the power you've got before God? Here is Elijah flying on a plane with no doubt doctors and lawyers and important men flying into Louisville. But this little woman went to praying. And before they left the airport, they checked the wheels, they checked the gears, everything was A-OK, -okay, ready to go. The pilots got comfortable. They got their coffee. They kicked their chairs back, put it in autopilot mode, whatever it is, and they were just soaring. And all of a sudden, they looked over, and there was a red light come on. They said, we never seen that light before. Pilot said, co-pilot, get the manual out and look at it. He opens the manual, looks at the light, looks at the manual, looks at the pilot, looks at the light, looks at the manual, and goes, land this thing right here, right now. Now, you may think I'm going a little too far with this, but I believe God knew exactly where to turn on the light at the right spot in the air, at the right place. And here come that plane. Hit the ground. Brother Brown walks down. You know the story. Can I tell you what happened? She began to pull on God. God, here's your, here's your boy. Here's... I'm your Shunammite, but where's your light? She pulled on God. Her faith, remember, said her faith, the faith of a mother, landed an entire airplane. What could your faith do in this church? What could your faith do for this ministry? What, what, what could your attention do while the preacher's preaching? What could those five minutes of consecration time 
before the service do for every service here. It's the operation of the Holy Ghost. Brother Andrew, I thought you were going to introduce something to us that can change the church. I am. Go home and look in the mirror. It's you. It's me. Let's stand our feet together. This old Bible is just full of treasures. Why should you be sick or poverty stricken? Why should you be cold and indifferent when the Bible is full of God's promises? Heavenly Father, He says, truly, the Bible is full of promises. And every promise is real. Every promise is ours. And you died that these promises might be fulfilled in us. Let the people not be afraid when they see that thing you spoke would come to pass. See it happening right above us. Is there any member here of Literal Life Church that can honestly say from the depths of your soul today, Lord, from this day forward, I'm taking advantage of every service. I'm taking advantage of every youth meeting. Lord, I've been playing around here way too long. With every head bowed, every eye closed. I feel the, the Spirit of the Lord just settling in the building right now. I believe He's here right now to deal with hearts. There be somebody here today that could say, Lord, I'll, I'll be the first to admit I've not been given everything I could. Lord, there's a lot more I could be given. I've kind of been holding back on you, Lord. I'm sorry. God bless you. God bless you there. God bless you back. God bless you. Lord, I see the pastor's been laboring to keep this rich atmosphere in the church. I've not been given like I should. But today, Lord, today I want to begin to operate. I want to be an operator in the house of God. I want to be, I want to be one, Lord, that when the atmosphere is a little tight, I want to be an operator to help open it up. Lord, I've, I've just been coming and the minister's been preaching and pouring his heart out. I'm ready for that 45-minute sermon and that I'm ready for that, that few songs at the end. I'm ready to go home now. But today, God, I, I want to say I'm sorry. Forgive me, I've not been, I've not been giving you the time you deserve. Oh, he's here this morning. He's here this morning. With every head bowed, every eye closed, let's just talk to him right now. Father, we love you this morning, Lord. Lord, as I stand behind this pulpit, I recognize I'm not standing in a poverty-stricken church. Lord, I'm not standing behind the poverty-stricken pulpit. But Lord, I'm standing behind the pulpit. Lord, that you've sent a message in this hour. And Lord, a pastor has laid, laid that message on this pulpit above the, above the congregation, above the young people, above the families, and encouraged them to believe this message is the answer. Now, Father, we're not underprivileged children here this morning. Your word is full of promises. Your word, this message is full of realities. Lord, if we've been leaving with substitutes, they've not been coming from you, Lord. They've been coming from us because we don't just want to put that little extra bit into the service. Now, Father, I believe that you sent your word and it healed the people. And I believe you've sent a word in this church this morning, not because I was here, but because you're here to heal 
Lord, if they would, if they would require Brother Paul to spend hours out of his week to prepare and to study as the shepherd. Lord, for years I know this man has faithfully done that. But Lord, over a few weeks, if he would begin to quit studying and just go about daily business and then just sit down and try to put a little something together at the last minute, it wouldn't be long before the people would say, something's wrong with Brother Paul. He's not putting into it what he used to. It's, it's not the same richness of the word. It's not the same caliber. What's going on? Oh, they would get fat mad, Lord. Well, he's our pastor. We, we support this church. We want more than that. Father, if there's people here today that's doing what they would get mad at the pastor for doing, may you help them to realize they're just as guilty. May you help them to realize if I demand dedication, I should give some myself. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Oh, can we just slip our hands up to him right now? Heal my Savior, Lord, call him. Can we see that? today, Lord. Every chapter, every verse, every line, I am trusting in His love divine. Every promise in the book. Do you take it today? Every promise, sing it again.
meet every need, Lord, is mine. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to live the lift our hands and say thank you Lord for the gifts that you've given me the gift of Jesus Christ the gift of Malachi 4 for the last days the gifts of the fivefold ministry how many would just say thank you Lord and we receive your gifts you send us Lord God not only do we want to obey him and follow him and embrace him Lord but God we want to believe that you can speak through these gifts Lord and bring the very words supernatural words that we need Lord, my life, I look over it is because of your gifts you sent. Lord, that I am what I am today. And you continue to put that minister in a channel, Lord, that feeds me and strengthens me and encourages me and heals me and gives me the peace that I need. It's through your gifts of your ministry, Lord. I just want to say thank you for it, Father. I don't deserve these things, but you gave them to me anyway. And I take them. Even the gift of the Holy Ghost, it is a gift. And I'm thankful one day I just took your gift and accepted it, Lord. God, you changed my life. Thank you, Father, for this service today. Grant to our brother strength and grant there be great, great, uh, Lord, uh, revelation and great things that come from this word today. Lord, we see the gifts of the church operating, Lord. And we see that we operate, many of them, Lord, as we encourage and by faith get behind the gifts that you've given to us, Lord. We're thankful for it. God, may we recognize sometimes, Lord, a gift, uh, just a, 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 an amazing thing can be right in the middle of the people and they not even realize it, Lord. Things that can provide the, the very things they need and they don't realize the gift that you've placed in the middle of them. God, may we not miss it, Father, from the gift of eternal life to all the way to Malachi 4, Lord, to the fivefold ministry today. And Lord, the gift that you place within us, we trust in it, Lord. We believe it. We just commit this service to you and all that you have for us, Lord. We commit it to you that there be great uh, a ripple-down effect, Lord. Let there be great uh, uh, victories come, not only today, but in the days to come as the people just get a hold of this word, Lord. We thank you for it, and we give you honor and glory today. Bless the day and bless our activities. And Lord, as we come back for your, the Lord's Supper, we pray that you just bless it, Lord, in our time together. And committing the day to you in this word. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. Everybody said amen. You say amen to the word of God. I, I tell you, I'm, uh, I, I stand amazed at what the Lord has done in my life.